This is the NFGM podcast with Gumato Guyo. We can fight against FGM, but if we are not serious, there is no day that the community, especially the pastoralist community, will listen to you. There is no day. They will just say it's a culture and it's just their cultural practices and they will never leave their beliefs. So that is the, exactly what I can tell them. Let them not think of just spreading in the towns like Nairobi and the developed places. Move to the undeveloped place, the uh, pastoralist community, the ones who are, don't have that knowledge about FGM. Welcome to the End FGM podcast. My name is Jeremiah Kipainoi. I spend time with change makers who are making an impact in Kenya and beyond. Each week, we listen to incredible stories of ordinary people just like you making a difference. They share their successes, failures, and what they are learning along the way. Thank you for being with me today. Let's get started. I am seated with Gumato Guyo, who comes from Marsabit, and she is a student in Nairobi. And she has sessions with other students who come from different parts of Kenya, and they discuss issues concerning FGM, which she spearheads. Thank you for joining me today here. Gumato, I really appreciate you being here today. We kick off with um, basically your background. Where do you come from? I come from a village called Maikona in Marsabit County. Uh, I'm from a Gabra community where FGM is highly practiced. I've got uh, three sisters and three brothers. And uh, my mother, she's also against FGM. So we, I, as she was also campaigning uh, and the FGM, against the FGM practices in our community, encouraging small girls. And also, example starts from at home. She also had uh, to show others example by... Oh, okay, personally, I underwent because I was with my grandmother. But uh, the kids that were, were with her did not undergo any the FGM practices. So she took the example and encouraging also my sisters uh, to fight against FGM. Just put yourself in the shoes of a class 8 uh, child. How is life like for such a child? When I was, uh, b- uh, the years back there, where the, the, the girls are circumcised when they are at the age of 10, 11, 9, some like that. So at that age, the mind and the mentality is also little, cannot think higher. So at home, if you see your fellow girls' uh, agements are uh, circumcised, you also have that eager of undergoing. But the, at home, uh, the grandmothers are the ones who usually practice, who usually do the act. They are the ones who cut. Yeah, they are the ones who cut. So I, if I see my fellow agents are undergone and have not undergone, I see there is a problem. People, there is, they are shaming you. Okay, others are saying uh, you, are, you are still young, you are still uh, a child. The right of passage you have not undergone. And if you are not circumcised, you will not be married. So you are unclean, something like that. That's the, the bad names you are given. And to avoid that, it forces you to just do for the sake and so that happened to you yeah that was in class eight i was in class six you said that there is stigma and sometimes you feel like you are left out um were there activities like songs or parties or or give the good things given to the girls who are there ceremonies to celebrate these girls how was the season like during that time and were you even in school then it is usually practiced during the long holidays Let's say December, in between the September and December, the long holidays uh, after schools, that's the time we have long holidays between September and December, when everybody, all, all the children from school are back at home at the villages. So it is uh, not done any howly. 
there is a period of uh, the, when it's rainy season and uh, there is availability of milk food that a, this child can eat but when there is a, w- the place where I'm living is a desert it's called Chalbi desert so it's a place the uh, season is once uh, it's season, the rainy is seasonal so only the rainy season is when there is a uh, plenty of milk the food is there the animals uh, come back home but uh, w- w- if it is done there is no any present you are given uh, there is no ceremony it's done no singing just silently it is done and you are there at your home but it is done when uh, there is plenty of milk they depend on milk most of the time yeah and so it means you said when the animals are back home that means that animals move out to go look for pasture over a long period of time yeah and it comes back when it's rainy and there is also pasture and water around the homes yeah but the girls are usually back at home they are just at home um what happens if uh for example someone doesn't have animals does it still um are they still going to cut the girl or everyone has an animal by, <laughs> by default <laughs> okay it's not a matter of it's not must you have the animals you personally if you don't have the others who have but they sell the milk what i mean is it's not must your animals come home but during that time of rainy season there is milk being brought to the let's say the um, the small shopping center we have they sell the milk store they are available and uh, before the girl is circumcised she's been encouraged advised been informed that she will be circumcised a week before or she will be me- mentally she will be prepared pre- prepared yeah by uh, she's advised by grandmother mother yeah, just women are the ones who advise them. That has happened to girls and even women over a over long period of time. Yeah. And it is something that's normal for everyone. Yeah, it's normal. And they know it is this period of time. How is it for a girl who is not cut? Okay, if you are not cut, you, are, uh, you will not be outcasted, but it is hard you feel there is something missing because people will just be talking about you and uh, degrading you. They will be degrading you, saying a lot about you. And uh, they will also say you are unclean. In short, you will not be, you don't expect any man to marry you from that culture, that tribe. I was circumcised when I was with my grandmother, in absence of my mother. But my elder sister, has not undergone up to now she's just educated uh, higher education she and uh, she went to school when she was with my parents went to alliance girls high school from there she got a scholarship flight to Slo- slovakia and uh, she's just in a life of modern life she has not been into that uh, tradi- life. yeah that mm-hmm. village and traditional life she doesn't know anything about that so also mother took an example as has her and then giving people example that even her daughter and now she's engaged after people are aware of uh, the effect of F- fgm but uh, you will feel there is people if people will to- be talking about you and saying negative things about you your mind and also thinking will not be resting at, at peace so it's disturbing you said your parents who stayed with your sister did not support fgm yeah they don't support fgm and uh, how how does that work for them being in that community it works uh, my parents stay at marsabit county the the uh, our town now Your marsabit town is county marsabit. yeah mm-hmm. but my corner is village and it's in desert mm-hmm. and so, that's why you used to stay with your grandmother yeah so my parents they stay in Marsabi town but they st- she still comes to that village without any fear encouraging they have been saying oh darare has been uh, uh, sup- against fgm she's just teaching children bad behavior she don't even oh they, she had, they have been saying so and so after all it took her a lot of years but now it's becoming like 
she has got another uh, women who are supporting her in uh, fighting against against FGM in that village yeah in uh, Marsabit county the same tribe and also some are from another different tribe like Malim Nuria Golo she's from a wayu uh, community but still she's fighting so so these women are also engaging themselves uh, politically they have been vying for my like mama has been vying for mca and like that malim nuria who has been fighting against has been vying for mp marsabit county so they engage themselves in uh, also leadership so that they have been known they form their project their um, mado mado the marsabit women advocacy organization like that so they are united and now that they, they have also uh, informed the Marsabit county that if FGM is has got a lot of effects to the ladies and the, if there is anyone practicing and they ha, they hear that there is someone who wants to practice they just talk to the to the security people or the police and the leaders in the county without others knowing that they are the ones who reported in mm-hmm. a secret way mm-hmm. yeah so they say they, they report they report and they don't show up but they don't show up themselves because they will be the communities are hostile mm-hmm. yeah with the fear of the community that's why they report but they, 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 the the police will make sure that the reporters will not be known mm-hmm. so they protect the people who done the whistle blowing yeah so it's still a very a, a very difficult topic to address among the gabra people yeah it's hard but nowadays the officers have taken high in any uh, harsh hand on the community now what is being done is it's done in secret not even publicizing like the before the years that you are very young Now it's like 10 years ago I'm almost 23 years so I don't know it's done in a secret way now no one can show out be proud that the, today her daughter will be circumcised everybody knowing no once she is also circumcised she will not be moving out of that door in, she will just be staying in that house because of the fear now they have so less girls are being cut now Yeah, less and the ones who are being cut are being done in secret. And so how, you will not mm-hmm. know who are who is circumcised and who is not circumcised now. Um, and that's that's basically within that that community where you come from. Yeah. Did you study outside? No, I studied Marsabit County for high school. So my high school I went to a school called Bishop Cavalera Girls the catholic school you went to a catholic school yeah but the school is uh, uh, under catholic but purposely for pastoralist children the nomad children Mm -hmm. so it's it doesn't matter of religion but the school is uh, under catholic mission so in the school we had a we had a leadership course where the nurses come to school teach about the effect of fgm uh, abo- about abortion early pregnancy all those things are we are being taught a session are, we are given a session of that the nurses uh, come to school encourage the girls whether fgm whether abortion whether uh, early marriages so it has got a lot of effect to our ladies there like now if we, they said if you are not if you are circumcised you will be you will abstain from sex so you will not be moving up and down looking for a man that's mm. what they believe that's the community yeah okay. but i don't think if it is true because the same girls who are circumcised are the same girls who who get pregnant before marriage mm-hmm. and once in my community once you get pregnant before marriage you are outcasted long time ago if a girl gets pregnant before marriage she's just thrown out of the community and to a desert plain plain land where there is no anything even a stone 
just a plain I like plain I tell you there is no trees there is no stones there is no water just a plain land even a shelter you'll not get you are just left there and then being eaten by animals so it so was that severe it, for you to get pregnant it, it before was getting a, it was a consequences now once you get a little pregnant before marriage that is the consequences you undergo or you will be you will be given to an old very old man who even doesn't that have have that energy to keep you yeah but the school encourages us to uh, prevent ourselves protect ourselves from there giving us the advices fgm that is the time now in 2014 2013 is when now it has been coming up in marsabit county that fgm has got a lot of effect to our bodies even the how it is done the stages and everything how it is cut the bleeding the child who is dying all the videos you have been shown and we saw it and so it it's just a severe and painful things that you are undergoing but most of the girls among the gabra community at least your age have undergone female genital mutilation yeah and are there any effects that has over time you've seen um fgn brought to girls that are maybe your age um cut compared to those who have not been cut yeah mostly okay i can say 99% are the ones who have been cut 99% of yeah. your age mates yeah so it's not easy to see or hear the girl who has not been circumcised so the ones who have been circumcised the problems they can get is at uh, giving birth or when uh, when now meeting with a man when meeting with a man some even decide to divorce after the the first night and or the second night but you will not know the problem where it is they do not speak about it yeah and if you can uh, investigate and uh, know what is the problem it's just because the body of a girl is too small for that man and he can force into the lady to girl's body so it's too painful for her she could not hold that pain and just decide and once you refuse to sleep with the, the man or your husband who has married you you will be beaten by the community you will be beaten closed into the house beaten nakedly there is a they use the whip to beat you until you accept again the following day the same the same until even you decide to run away from your home and that community the gabra the gabra practice infibulation before our time but later they practice the stage 2 now the, the stage 2 is what they are practicing so at the another stage the, the another problem the girls could face is giving birth you can see a girl a woman gives birth the first child the child can survive and then a woman die due to overbleeding and they are at home there is no maternity hospital and we have got the midwives who are the ones uh, assisting you in giving birth so they might not be perfect in in uh, in helping a woman to give birth so uh, we have got a lot of problem of a bleeding or even and again after you have you have been circumcised and you are giving birth once the child is out you are then again you have been sued again the same process any any stage any time you give birth the same process is being repeated so your body is just becoming now what loose mm. and so that happens every time a lady goes It through that mm. but the community sees that since every woman has gone through that then it's okay for every girl to go through that in the past traditional basis yeah it's okay even you can see in the past even you can see it's a girl even who is requesting because she sees her agement is undergoing what about me you see until even she cries but even the parents are the ones who are encouraging in uh, undergoing fgm the circumcision but nowadays even there are some girls the parents are not forcing them 
and they they just say okay no because now that every almost everybody 70 80% is learned they are just continue with their life even the boys accept though not pa- high percentage very few are the ones who are accepting, are expe- but, are accepting and they are not ready to marry was not even if they accept they will not be ready to marry the lady who has undergone or has not undergone the circumcision and why is that this the cultural practices so they also feel she will be moving out of the marriage leaving the husband you know at the, at the village there in People are the pastoralists. Some uh, can even decide to for to, to go and look after the uh, animals, and the wife is left at home. So she decides to skip and have an, another uh, another man. So that's what they think. And of which, still in the past in my community, people who have also undergone the circumcision still can go out of marriage again. Once the the husband has gone, we have got they have got another side chick. So it was even acceptable in my community a long time ago. It was acceptable it to was have. It was acceptable a- to have a, another man when the other one is not around there. But nowadays, with the technology, you cannot do that. People will make calls. Yeah. And you came here to study. Yeah. When did you first interact with the anti-FGM campaign? I first interacted with the anti-FGM in a conference. And also after that, I came back to my school where I study and also talked to the dean and asked for a permission whenever there is a, con- uh, there is a gathering. I, he, he can give me a, a chance to address them about the uh, anti-FGM and also in a classes also i can leave my class for 10 minutes and go if i am being called to go and just tell them the effect of fgm so that they can be aware of uh, the effect behind the practice and why would that be important for the dean to of course you should be in class is is that it's also a good idea to tell the fellow girls tell them how it is done without any fear and why is it done after that the, the circumcision is done the effects and uh, yeah i also talked to if they have got their own meeting like the igembe people students who come from igembe uh, meru county so i could talk to them the journalist journalist students in their classes like the dean has got a a class with the journalism students. He can give me five minutes when I don't have class. I can sacrifice myself and then go and talk to them. Yeah, and also when there is an orientation in the school, welcoming of the freshers in the school, I could talk to them. Yeah. And so you have all these forums to speak to actually many students because this is a school that has a population of um, quite a number of students and um, you are able to speak to students who are either from these communities or even not within these communities. Have you ever had uh, a conversation with someone who thinks that FGM should continue and they are very strongly um, adamant? Okay, like today we had a conversation, uh, a show at the my school a show a radio show tv show oh your school has a tv okay a tv show so a lady by the name rachel could interview us with my i with can interview us with a a fellows a fellow student Mm -hmm. from kisi who could support fgm and uh, one of so the, uh, the student was from Kisi and supports FGM. And supports FGM. A lady or a gentleman? A gentleman. Mm. So the the guy from Kisi could support FGM because he says the wife materials come from the ones who have been circumcised and he could get a good wife who cannot move uh, up and down after she after marriage, of which it was 
total lie. And uh, at the end, after we convinced and told him the truth about uh, it, so he could say, yeah, I disagree and support anti-FGM. And so he's now supporting he is, the anti-FGM campaign. At, at the time, at the time we left each other, he was supporting, <laughs> and he said, "Okay, in some uh, another way, he could not uh, a bit. He could he could still stick in his culture, cause even his grandma, his grandparents practice. He still some others who are practicing, but he could not know the effect of uh, FGM." He could be enjoying him himself alone, but that lady could not be enjoying uh, the game with him. So, and the giving bad, over bleeding. After we told him all about that, he could say, fine. But it's never easy to convince everyone like it's that. It's never easy. Yeah. It's too hard. Even the community, if you talk to them, they see it's like you're just lying to them. It has been there. And now you are telling us it, uh, to end FGM. It's not easy. It's very hard. You can speak, speak, speak. Sp- can you, you can preach to everyone day and night. But t- for people to stop it, it's hard. Very few could reason. First, the illiterate people, it's hard to, inconv- to convince them. Only illiterate people in my community can a bit listen to you. But uh, still, the illiterate also... The literate can uh, do it in a secret way. And so someone has gone to school, knows all the effects of FGM, but things still, you know, still part practicing. of my culture. Yeah. And how is it like for you when you are in school? Um, you've spoken to someone joins, joins campus and the first thing he or she encounters is an anti-FGM a message. How is it like for you walking around the compound? Okay, they see they see me like they first thought that I'm a uh, working class. <laughs> Never thought that I'm just a student, fellow students like them. But uh, others even could ask, "How does it feel?" Or uh, the many questions they could ask. Yeah, encouraging them to stop. But uh, in the school, the, the the journalism students could look for me. If it is time to interview, they could call me. Interview me, ask me more about it. Some even have got another, working with another project. Uh, like uh, there is a project also in Marsabiti we call uh, Papa with Kabale Duba, the pants and the pads, also concerning about the ladies. So they could ask me, can we help each other in that? What? I tell them, as per now, I'll be fighting against FGM mm-hmm. with my studies. So later we'll be talking about that. So everywhere you go, you try to spread the anti-FGM yeah, message. Yeah. And how is it like for you in terms of interaction with students now that you publicly go out and tell them, you know, I've undergone this. I didn't know. I actually um, am part of a community that um, normalizes this. Everyone feels like this is important. Um, or even the girls want to be cut. And how, how do they... Um, how do they see it generally? Okay, they see it positive because uh, in uh, my school, the Kushites are very few. We are few in number. And uh, in my class, I'm the only Kushite in class of tourism and travel. So I could not get any opposer. I could get someone who, who supports and say, yeah, it's, it's true that FGM can kill and uh, because they have got, uh, in the school, we, are, we have got, beside the Kushites, the majorities are the Kikuyu, the Meru, the other communities. So they could, uh, because they have not undergone majority of them, they could support and say, I, I, we, even, it's, they thank God that they have not undergone. Now that me personally have undergone, and now I am discouraging them from practicing. For me, I am denied my rights. I could not... As they have said, I could not feel, I could not enjoy what the, the man is enjoying. So they could see, okay, I'm a courageous. They can tell me, some tell me, you're a courageous girl. You can even talk, speak, and say, oh, yeah. And me, for me, I could even uh, decide to sometimes vie for uh, leadership in that school and encourage more and more. 
and be a role model in the school. And also back at home. And also back at home. And that really means a lot because many people um, really do not know uh, what FGM entails. They just hear. Some of them actually even hear about FGM when they're in campus. And um, I think it's really important that we are able to speak about these things even among people who are not practicing them because just as you said, the journalism club now wants to reach out to you about stories of FGM and probably even wanted to go down to the community to um, try do stories and bring that to light. Why is it important to you? It's important both to those who have practiced and who have not practiced. To those who have not practiced, lucky they are because they are saved from the harm. To those who have practiced, unfortunately, it's the time to encourage their younger siblings or their daughters in future to not practice because they know the harmful effects that they are undergoing now. So me, I could say the advice to them is both I give them the positive uh, encouragement. I will not be discouraging also those who have undergone. I should encourage them that, okay, accept that the deed is it's already done. But now what is the next step you could take? It's now for you to stand, stand, if, uh, to stand firm and say no to FGM. And uh, encourage any person who is coming across you. You can even, I can even just walk with a friend and talk to her and tell her, you know, I'm fighting against FGM. Yeah, even I was called just a story as we walk. And then she will definitely ask me, and what is, and why are you against? That's the question they ask me. So I could tell them I know the effect. I know what I have undergone. So the painful, the legs you are tired for two weeks. No, you cannot walk. You have been denied many things. It's like a torture you are undergoing. But yet, our parents back at home don't know that it's, it is harmful to us. For them, it's a positive thing. Yeah, for them, it's a positive thing. So her daughter has grown and uh, stepped away to another stage. And uh, now that she's an adult, she's ready to be married. I can tell you, even there are some girls that can be circumcised at nine nine years and after two weeks before the wound is uh, has healed she's again been uh, married to uh, she's been sold to, uh, let's say to an, a man who is all and yet that wound is still fresh so it's the body is becoming complicated that time have you had any success stories of what you speak, people coming to you and tell you, okay, you know, I've learned about this, or maybe you've helped me, or probably now I can speak out against FGM in my community. Do you have any any feedback that you get from the students, or even the teachers, or anyone who spe- who you speak to? Uh, the teacher, the students, some also came and told me, okay, whatever you are doing is a good work, and uh, can I join you? How can I join you in fighting against FGM and also the teacher the dean of students could tell me this is a good job he can even he can even encourage me to fight against FGM what they can give me as a teachers is to is to spread in the school and also helping these students if they go home to inform the in their villages he could tell them not only you listen and you keep quiet. You just you listen and you go and help others. That's how he can he can also encourage the students. And the other students uh, could ask me how they can also fight. I told them there is no one who is paying you. It's you. You just volunteer. If it is hundred shilling, we all contribute and we go together. And we say no to FGM. We talk to the communities who will be, who are the ones uh, practicing more. So, uh, so, so you plan to go to communities yeah. and, and basically have a conversation with them. Yeah. And we are having people from other communities. And you said maybe some of them were not uh, pro this campaign. They wanted uh, to just keep, keep, it, uh, to keep practicing FGM. In their communities 
the Meru community. So the story has been uh, moving up uh, around that uh, they, uh, they circumcised a lady and she overbled until even she lost her life. So we could take an example as that and tell others that uh, as you see that child, she was trying to refuse and uh, they could force her with that force. She had a lot of cuts and uh, bleed, she bled and she had an infection in her body. So when you undergo and you refuse and they, they, the governments are uh, against also FGM and once they hear, they hear about what you are doing, your parents also can abandon you and run away. So they can see there is a lot of effects. And uh, we could take such examples and uh, talk to the students. Yeah. And the students took it well. Yeah. And to say no. You could even ask the gentlemen uh, to help us in fighting against FGM. So what are the lessons that you've learned over time from your experiences back in the village and even uh, speaking to this, these young people in schools uh, from either practicing or non-practicing communities? What lessons have you learned over time? To the learned people, they are ready to accept. But leaving behind is something which is too hard. They could say, yeah, okay, I know it's bad. But the ones who have undergone, they could say, I wish I knew. Because how they, they were not aware by that time. But now that they are, I wish I knew what they can now, if it is, uh, if it is true, they can say, uh, they could say, I will not be circumcising my girl in future. Yeah, I can say, okay, this is a positive way encouragement they could even encourage me and say i can encourage myself and say at least there is a bit of positive impact that i have left in i will be living in the school behind or even back at home i could give them a positive way to fight against fgm uh, is there something you'd like to share to people and yeah just encourage them in the anti-fgm campaign I can tell them to be keen and uh, let's be serious. If we really want to fight uh, FGM, it's easy for us. We join each other, we can fight against FGM. But if we are not serious, there is no day that the community, especially the pastoralist community, will listen to you. There is no day. They will just say it's a culture and it's just their cultural practices and they will never leave their beliefs. So that is the, exactly what I can tell them. Let them not think of just spreading in the towns na, like Nairobi and the developed places. Move to the undeveloped place, the uh, pastoralist community, the ones who have, don't have that knowledge about FGM. Yeah. This has been quite an inspiring conversation with you, Gumatu. And I appreciate you being here, but of course, you cannot have hours and hours to speak because, of course, even the listener would like to take a break from all this what you've been speaking about today. But thank you very much. I, I, I'd really like to have more conversations revolving around um, working and living in these communities and seeing transformation from the eye, from a lens of the community, because sometimes we, we tend to to want to change things, but you are not willing to see how the community looks at it and try to bring change from within that community. So thank you very much. And I hope that even as you are upcoming in this field, um, in this anti-FGM campaign, even when you start from school, speaking to students, speaking uh, to even lecturers and teachers, that you will be able to grow much more into your community back at home and even be able to work with them so we are bringing this to a close and i would like uh if you are willing to to share any uh, way people would um reach out to you if you are willing to share your contacts to the public um how would someone be able to reach you in marsabit you can reach me with the mwado project and uh, facebook 
you can reach me kumato guyo that's g u m u g u m a t o and g u y o kumato guyo kumato guyo okay on uh, email my email kumato guyo 123 at gmail.com it's an honor being able to just have a sit down with you and have a conversation about uh, your journey from back at home and even speaking to young people from practicing and not even from practicing alone but also from um, communities that actually don't have any information about FGM so thank you very much i appreciate you being here with me today and uh, to the listener we've been with Gumato Guyo a lady from Marsabit who's been speaking to students in her school and having conversations about FGM and the effects of FGM and how drastic measures should be taken to curb it in different parts of the country. You've been listening to the End FGM podcast. My name is Jeremiah Kipainoi and today we were seated here with Gumato Guyo who comes from Marsabit up north in Kenya and she's been speaking to students from practicing and non-practicing communities about FGM its effects and how they could get involved in the fight against this device. Thank you very much for joining me today. Until the next time, see you. You can get bonus materials, notes and much more at www.kipainoi.com. K I P A I N O I.com. Please remember We all can do something. Go out and make a difference. For we all have a responsibility to make this world a better place. Goodbye.